Hi, I'm Jeff Kleinman, the Editor-in-Chief of Project Nosh, here on the floor of Expo West with Paul Nardoni, the CEO of Pop Corners, and now Our Little Rebellion. And Paul, I really want to thank you for joining us. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the journey that the brand has been on since you came on in September 2015. So okay. where was it and what has been the, the play? Sure, well thanks for having me, thanks for stopping by here. Uh, so I did join the company uh, shortly after it was acquired by Primera, a global private equity firm. I joined in September 2015 and uh, as I've done on these type of assignments before, I first looked at the team and uh, realized we wanted to build out a team of experienced professionals that know how to build brands and know how to scale businesses. So uh, we've been really focused since September of 15, building a world-class organization, uh, a stellar sales team led by Dan Morgan, our president, and a great marketing organization led by Laura Kirkendall, our VP of marketing. Uh, the manufacturing organization has always been a pretty robust organization, so that's what I inherited. Yeah. So this was a co-packer that had sort of an in-house branded product, right? Yep. Uh, the company was a co-packer for many other CPG brands and Better For You Snacks and also had the Pop Corners brand. So that's what I inherited. Uh, our co-pack business is thriving, which is indicative of there being so much activity in this space. But I came in with a brand strategy to scale our Pop Corners business uh, first and foremost and create a platform brand that could go into adjacent categories. And that's where our little rebellion serves that purpose. Uh, we've been really focused on building out the Popcorners franchise uh, in many other parts of the U.S. So when I came on board in September of 2015, it was pretty much a Northeast brand, had great bragging rights in the Northeast, and we've leveraged that success in the Northeast to build national distribution. Uh, I think you'd find our ACV today on Popcorners is just north of 50%. So we're off to a good start. You've been in the Northeast for so long. Um, you've got to turn consumers on to our little rebellion. Um, how do you do that and balance extending the brand into places where that, that kind of thing is a new uh, brand platform? Great question. I mean, so we introduced our little rebellion in what I would describe as a passive way, as an umbrella over Pop Corners, but you'd still find Pop Corners is the dominant brand that people see. And that was important to us, that people see the Pop Corners that they know and love. Uh, we stayed with the black theme that you know was part of the company's DNA, uh, but we introduced a new concept to them, our little rebellion, saying you know this is how we do things uh, a little differently than other people, and our, our patented technology is is uh, providing us an opportunity to expand into adjacent categories with bean chips and protein chips, and we would expect to introduce some vegetable chips very soon as well. Our little rebellion gives you the capability of, a, of expanding the brand into a bunch of horizontal categories that are adjacent. How do you, uh, how do you keep people in the Northeast from rebelling? Sure, great question. And you know, I would say that we continue to learn every day um, how to do that best. Um, I think what we have proven to be successful with is attracting new consumers. Uh, particularly millennial consumers and Gen X consumers. So we've reviewed some recent uh, Nielsen panel data and it shows that our, our new brand look is in fact attracting those younger consumers with families, which was one of our objectives. Uh, but you're hitting on something that is a challenge and that's how to carry forward the consumer franchise you have and not leave any of those folks behind. And so and what do you do? I, I grade us probably a B. Okay. Uh, and that there's areas for improvement and we'll continue to explore our packaging uh, and, and all of the other consumer touch points we have to make sure that we continue to bring everyone forward. So what kind of advice do you have for some of the newer, less established entrepreneurial companies uh, with regard to that kind of pivot and expansion? Well, I would say the Popcorners case study is, is a good example for entrepreneurs to look at as, as to needing to be forward thinking when you develop a brand strategy uh, and, and enabling that brand uh, to span beyond. Yeah, you were beyond, kind of, beyond, can I say it? You were kind of painted into a pop corner. That's correct. That's by correct. the brand name. That's correct. And, and by giving birth to a new brand such as Our Little Rebellion, it takes time to develop a brand. It takes yeah. time to nurture that. And we're in the process of doing that. And we felt it would have been a mistake to 
lean too heavy into our little rebellion and sacrifice the core essential attributes of Popcorners. So we think we've done a good job there, but we're continuing to learn from consumer feedback what we can do even better going forward. And how do you extend the Popcorners brand equity into the other categories? Well, what we learned through our consumer research is what people love about Popcorners, and they said it time and time again, is it's a different kind of crunch. Yep. And that has everything to do with our patented technology. And that we're, a we're able to take grains such as corn, rice, uh, potato, vegetables, many other types of inclusions, and pop them into a crispy and crunchy type of texture. And the key thing is, without the use of any binders, and other people in our space uh, have similar products that are made from pellets, and we believe a pellet snack is fundamentally different than what we do. And that light, crispy, crunchy, airy texture uh, has to do with the inputs that we use, our, our non-GMO grain ingredients, and the technology that we have to bring that to life. And I think our, our bean chips are a great example of that. And that here's, a, here's a product that's made from green peas, yellow peas, black beans, and corn. Uh, and those are the only ingredients with a dash of salt. And that's our, our, our sea salt bean crisp. It has two and a half grams of fat, uh, uh, only about 100 calories per bag per serving. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful product. The other bean chips in the category are all fried yep. at seven grams of fat. Yeah, absolutely. So we're having tremendous success uh, introducing our little rebellion bean crisps and national accounts and from coast to coast. And you can extend the technology across established or even sort of fast growing categories as long as you're able to match up the right ingredient. That's correct. We now have the platform to do so. So I would argue that we would have never been able to successfully realize the full potential of Bean Crisps under the Popcorners brand name. So that was the rationale for giving birth to a new brand name, Our Little Rebellion. And now our Bean Crisps and soon to be our Protein Crisps and then Vegetable Crisps will exist under this umbrella platform. Well, Paul, thanks very much for sharing the story of our little rebellion with us and for that great advice for consumers. And uh, good luck with the, uh, with the company. Well, thanks again for coming by and stay tuned for the next chapter. Absolutely. Uh, for Project Nosh, I'm Jeff Kleinman.